Welcome to the Automation Center course in EZU. In this course, you will learn what Automation Center is and how to create workflows. Please keep in mind, this video is intended for all Automation Center users. However, some portions of this video will be geared towards basic users, while others will be geared towards admin users. With the EasyLinks Automation Center, your agency can create workflows that help automate manual tasks so that your agency can focus on what's really important, your customers. Automation Center has several different scenarios, which are called triggers. When a trigger goes off, the Automation Center then does an action. Now that you know what Automation Center is, let's dive in. First, let's briefly go over the Settings tab in Automation Center. Please keep in mind, this is only available to admins, as they're the only ones who can enable basic users the ability to suggest workflows. To navigate there, hover over the Settings icon and click on Automation Center. Now, click on the Settings tab. Here, you'll find an option to allow easy links to suggest automated workflows. This will be enabled by default, but admins can disable it by deselecting the checkbox. However, it is highly recommended that you don't opt out of this to utilize recommendations to create workflows. Next, you can set day and time for email and text actions. Select business day to limit actions from Monday through Friday or calendar day for all days of the week. Use the drop-downs below to select the time range for emails and texts sent via Automation Center. Under that, you can check the checkbox to disable automation on holidays. The holidays will be listed in the settings under the checkbox. Additionally, any scheduled automation actions that fall on one of the holidays will automatically execute the following business day. Finally, the last setting allows you can set the day for all other actions. Select either business day or calendar day. If any changes are made, click save. Next, we'll cover how to create workflows. Please note, whether you are an Automation Center basic or admin user, you will be able to see the setup automation option throughout various areas of easy links. However, only admin users can create workflows. Whereas basic users can only suggest workflows. To create or suggest a new workflow, navigate to the Workflows tab within Automation Center. If you're an admin, you'll see a button to create new workflow, while basic users will see a button to suggest new workflow. Regardless of which user you are, the process will remain the same until the finish setup stage. Go ahead and click on the button available to you, whether you're an admin or basic user. The first thing you'll notice is our recommended templates, which are available to both basic and admin users. Any template seen here can be selected and edited. These cover many use cases and are a good starting point for creating an effective workflow while saving time. You can also view and select tags that EasyLinks has created and assigned to each template and trigger. One or more tags will be associated to each template and trigger. This will narrow down your search and you can view appropriate templates or triggers associated with the tags. You can create workflows using any template and trigger you see fit. Additionally, you can change the name, actions, and filters to suit your business requirements. For training purposes, we will create a workflow without a template. The workflow we create will send a welcome email to only customers assigned to me that have a new homeowner's policy. Sending an email to a customer when you get their policy is a good way to make them feel valued. Go ahead and scroll down to view the triggers. You can expand a section using the drop-down arrow. We will select New Customer under Management System. Keep in mind that you can see a description of the triggers below. After selecting the trigger, you'll land on the Filters section of the workflow. Filters allow you to narrow down your criteria for the triggers. For instance, if you don't add any filters, then the new business policy that is added or created in the system will trigger the automated event. As you add filters, it makes it to where the automated events only get triggered under certain circumstances. Here, you can click into the drop-down to choose from all the secondary filters. The filter options are dependent upon the trigger that is selected. The first filter you're going to select is for the line of business. You can leave the second option set to as one of. In the final drop-down, select the option for homeowners. If you do not see the line of business you need in the drop-down, you can type it into the search field. If it still doesn't appear, the line of business is not available for this feature. 
If you want to add any additional lines of business to this filter, you can do so by clicking into the last section again and selecting it there. Now, you'll need to add one more filter to show only your customers. Select the In button, then click into the drop down. The option you want to select is Assigned Producer. Once again, leave the secondary option set to as one of. In the final drop down, select your username. When ready, click the Next button. You'll land on the Actions section of the workflow. Please note that these actions are based upon the trigger selected. Here, you want to choose the email option. Please keep in mind, the email option is only used to send an email to your customers. This cannot be used to send emails to your fellow agents or producers. Next, you'll need to select an email template by clicking into this first drop-down. These templates can be created with email campaigns within the Communication Center product. To learn how to do this, check out our How to Create Email Campaign Templates video. Now, select the email template for new customer welcome. You can edit and preview them to make sure that the templates are the right ones you want to use. As you can see, this email campaign's template has two emails that will be sent out. One is a welcome email to the customer as soon as their policy is added to the system and another is sent two days later, letting the customer know about Client Center. EasyLink's Client Center is a customer portal where your customers can find their policy information. To learn more about this, check out our Client Center for Agents video. Now, click in the box if the email is for marketing purposes. You can click the question mark icon to read more about this disclaimer. Because this is a transactional relationship email, you can leave this box unchecked. Additionally, you can click inside this box to send a text message if there's no email on file for your customer. When ready, click the Save Action button. Now we're back on the Add Actions page. To the left, you'll notice the Workflow Sequence Preview pane. As you build your workflow, the steps will be listed here. Some of these steps may have buttons included to make updating them easier. As you can see, there are edit and delete buttons next to the send email actions we just created. Now, we're going to go ahead and add another action before we continue to the final step. Click on the action to create note slash task. First, give the note a discussion title and description. To add a task, click the assign task icon. To learn more about agency workspace actions, check out our create notes and tasks with agency workspace video. Here, you can select whether the task will be assigned to the producer, CSR, or another specific user. You can also set a due date and time, as well as toggle whether the task is important or not. Additionally, you can add a checklist by clicking the Add Checklist button. Choose a checklist from the drop-down or create a new one. You can also add a reminder if you wish to do so. Now, click the Save Action button. If you look to the left in the workflow sequence preview, you can see the newly added action for create note slash task. Notice that it's between the first email and the second email. This is because of the number of days selected to wait until the action is triggered. These actions will be listed in order of when each occur. Now, click on the next button to proceed. This final page will differ whether you're an admin or basic user. To finish the workflow, give the workflow a name and description. Admins will have the ability to enable the workflow to begin automation now or leave it disabled until you wish to enable it. Then, check the agencies that the workflow should be shared with and click Select. If you have a workflow with text messaging, you may notice the option for Smart Stop. Enabling this feature will help prevent redundant communication with customers so they are not overwhelmed. Lastly, you'll need to click on Save Workflow if you're an admin or click Suggest to Admin if you're a basic user. An additional pop-up will appear for basic users where you'll need to select who the automation suggestion will be sent to and the reason for automation. Once you've done this, simply click the Submit Suggestion button. After saving or suggesting a workflow, you are automatically taken back to the Workflow tab in Automation Center. If the workflow was created by a basic user, the suggested workflow will then be sent to the admin via email. From there, the admin will click on the link in the email and be brought to the workflow in Automation Center. Admins will need to go through each tab in the suggested workflow and decide whether to approve it or not. Again, admins, you will have the choice to enable or disable the workflow on the Finish Setup page. 
To approve a suggested workflow, simply click the Save Workflow button. Otherwise, you can click Cancel to exit. Next, we'll discuss suggested automation a bit more. Regardless of whether you're a basic or admin automation center user, you will be able to view the suggested workflows section. This will be useful to both admin and basic users to understand what workflows they have received for approval and the workflows that they have sent for approval, respectively. If you're an admin user, you can edit, enable, disable, duplicate, and delete the suggested workflows. However, if you're a basic user, you can only view suggested workflows. The Workflows tab will be accessible to both basic and admin users. However, only admins will be able to create new workflows. Whereas basic users will have the ability to suggest new workflows. Additionally, the only action a basic user has access to here is the ability to duplicate an existing workflow. Whereas admins can edit, enable, disable, duplicate, and delete existing workflows. Next, let's briefly go over the history and dashboard tabs in Automation Center. Please keep in mind, both of these tabs will only be available for admins. Go ahead and click on the History tab. This shows the history of all the triggered workflows in your agency. There is a filter option and search bar at the top if you are looking for something specific. You can click the down arrow to the far right of a workflow to see more details about its status, actions, start date, and completion date. Now, click on the Dashboard tab at the top. Here, you can view your current Automation Center tier. This tab breaks down your executed workflows, actions executed, and actions failed. You can also view the status of how many workflows are enabled versus the total number of saved workflows. Additionally, there is a graphical view that can be set for this month, last month, and year to date. That's all for this EZU course on Automation Center. You now should have the knowledge and skill needed to create Automation Center workflows, both from scratch and using a template. Thanks for watching.